welcome to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. And I'm Kim Cavanaugh. And we're back for more on Picasso we this are, week. Lee, we're going to be talking more about photo editing. And, and really, we're using a program called Picasso from Google. And third it is version. Third version. And it, the cost of it is? Free. Free. Uh, and, you know, everybody pretty much has digital cameras these days. If you don't yeah. have one, boy, just try to go buy a film camera. Oh, that's tough. It a lot is of companies tough. have stopped making you, them. You can't even hardly buy film or film cameras any longer. So it's a huge challenge for a lot of people to be able to organize yeah. and edit and work with the photographs that they've captured digitally. But this great application for Picasso does it all for you. And as we saw last week, um, it's really great at organizing and, and letting you see all your photographs that you've got stored on your computer. And it makes it easy. It makes I it like that really, part. really easy. So today we're going to review a little bit about Picasso. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the more advanced features. So some really cool things that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. So if we get our computer screen up here. We'll go through our agenda for today. Okay. Very important. And we'll use this new fancy button on the side of our wireless keyboard. <laughs> that we discovered. That we just <laughs> discovered. So we're going to be talking about how to tune your photographs. Okay. Um, if you've ever taken a picture inside uh, a building that was using fluorescent light. Always yellow. You're going to have a yellow photograph. So Picasso's got a great way to do that. Last week we saw how to do red eye reduction. Yeah, that was nice. Um, and then this week we're also going to look at some of the special effects. Some of the standard effects, and then some really cool effects, stuff that's just fun. Yeah. And this is the part I really think is really uh, applicable to a lot of folks out there in our audience, publishing from Picasso. It's great. A lot of different things you can do. Great to have your pictures on your computer, but unless you have somebody come to the computer and look at them with you, uh, they won't be able to see them. So we're going to be talking about how to make movies, how to make slideshows and collages and posters, and even how to send your photographs down to your local uh, film processor to have them printed out on regular film stock. Or just have people watch them online. Yep. I mean, they, they can go to your website on Picasso Online mm -hmm. and view all of your pictures there based on the access that you allow them. That's right. And, of course, we'll have our uh, question of the week, and it's all about something called fishing. Gone fishing. Gone yeah, fishing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll get started. Let's see okay. if I can remember which no. key I want to press. All right, let me get out of that. All right, Lee, so last week we uh, started by, oh, let me go bit here first. Let me get back to Picasso. We started by talking about how to get Picasso. Uh, it is a Windows only, although there's a new beta of the Macintosh version. Yeah, that would be nice, I understand. Too. Yeah, I would like to check that out. But primarily this is a Windows application, so if you've got a Windows computer, Picasso is a great deal for you. Now, you do have to have an Internet connection because mm -hmm. you need to download it, right? Or a friend so, with one, because you could download you could, it to a thumb drive. You could download it and save it to a thumb drive, yeah. but it works best if you have an online connection, because some of the tools do depend on that. Yeah, that's nice So to you can go to picasa.google.com, and there's a great big old button right there that says Download Picasa Can't Free. Miss it. And we walked through it last week on last week's show. You just download it, you run it. It's um, less than 10 megs. That's right. And the only thing that we uh, talked about that you wanted to be careful of or give some thought to when you're downloading is do you want it to down do you want it to index or find mm. all the pictures on, on your entire computer yeah. or just the ones in your my documents and that's the way I have mine set yeah. uh, just for my documents because there's a lot of stuff in my computer that I don't really want indexed so we went through that last week yeah let's get into the good stuff and that took us to the point where we are now looking at the Picasso interface mm -hmm. Now, typically, you start out in the library. Now, your library basically is your collection of all your photographs that you've, that you've taken. And well, let's see. What do we have here? Is uh, there no, something it wants to import? I don't think so. I must have just clicked the wrong Yeah. Button. All right. So the library contains these folders over here that allow you to organize things. And these are created automatically. Uh, and, and Picasso looks for the date on the photographs. Every photograph, as you know, a lot of meta has data. something hidden information called metadata. The date it was taken. So even if you don't remember, you know how the picture type sometimes of camera, right, the type resolution. of camera, the lens, the, uh, it's the aperture setting. It's really pretty cool. Stuff all you stuff. don't even know you were doing. Right. But so here we have, and we've just done some simple ones here. We've got some uh, pictures from Lee's. Uh, trips to Mexico and out and about, and, uh, and as you can see here, we've got uh, these located in uh, folders. But you can do a couple of other things, and we didn't really look at these last week. You can also uh, change the view so you see things in more of a folder structure, and you can also sort by which ones were changed recently. Yeah. 
Um, and there's even a timeline on here. Isn't there? Let's see. If, I can't remember if we have used that before or not. There we go. So if I click on View and then Timeline, it's really kind of cool because it's going to show me a collection of my images here in a in whole different format. So I can then click on this collection and just kind of work through my timeline. And again, these are my pictures in a, um, in, in basically on in when group, I took them. Yeah. Right, so when I took them. So these are pictures. Look at that. Double click. Automatically creates a slideshow for you. So imagine you're sitting at home and you want to show uh, some people the, the pictures of your recent vacation. Mm -hmm. Picasso is going to automatically put them in there. All you got to do is double click and you automatically have a slideshow. Like I said, this is what I like about this program. So it's very, easy. very cool. All right, and all sorts of cool things. Now, what do you want to do first? We're going to talk a little bit about some special effects. I think we need to look at something that we would be uh, tuning first. Something oh, that's that needs right. some fine tuning on it. All right, so let's take a look at this picture here. Now, that's a pretty nice picture of a, um, a hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Hibiscus, as my, uh, my young brother used to call them. Now, one of the things that you can do, you can simply click on Auto Color. And what this will do, it will take away any color cast that might have been added. Now, you may not see a dramatic change in this case. And uh, Lee's telling me I should go up and look at tuning. But one of the things I like to do here, Lee, and I'm going to undo that auto color, one of the things you might want to do in a picture like this where you've got some dark areas is you might want to tune the fill light just a little bit. I'm going to bring that up. And you see how the mm -hmm. background starts to lighten as I do yeah. that? And the foreground pretty much stays the same. So that's a good place to do some real simple tuning. But right here on the top, there is a, a tab called Tuning. And this gives you greater control than that other one that we just looked yeah, at. Yeah, it lets you work with different parts right. of the lighting Right, so effects. here again, here's my fill light. All right, so same thing. It's basically going to lighten the entire picture. Mm -hmm. But what if I want to um, work on my shadows, my darker parts of the picture? Okay, as I raise that up, you see how it Is darkens it? that down. Yeah, and it's working All mainly right. in the darker colors. So let's picture. try my highlights. Is that what I want now? That'll work with your higher colors. Now you see what I'm looking at the right hand side of my screen where those where those mm -hmm. trees are just a little too dark, and I can just tweak that up like that, and that gives me a really good representation, a better photograph than what I had before. So very easy to do that. One of the nice things, too, that you can do in any image application is use this neutral color picker. Yeah, that's nice to use. And when you do that, you want, what you want to do is look for a gray area on your screen. And when you select it, notice how everything else is kind of adjusted based on yeah. that gray that you're looking for, that neutral color. And the other nice thing to do with these is to play with it. Yeah, see what different things you can do, mm -hmm. like picking a neutral color. while. Try different colors. See what works best for the picture. Right. It's going to update it instantly. Makes it easy to use, and you, know, you can play with and it. The cool thing is, you, you can take a good picture and make it a great picture mm -hmm. by just doing some simple things like this. All right. When we come back from the break, we'll uh, talk about some special effects and some other cool stuff. So stay with us here on Computers for the Completely Clueless.